This is the Toastmasters International. District 30. Central North Division Contest! We've got a very exciting contest for you tonight. And we're going to have several great speakers show you with what they have learned how good of a contest it is. Before I get too carried away and tell you all about that, we have a contest master who will do just that. It is my privilege and my honor to welcome one of my mentors, a longtime Toastmaster. She's a DTM, a former class, a former class president, a former <laughs> club president, and maybe even the class president as well. She's a good friend, and she will be helping us as our contest master tonight. Please join me in giving a well, warm welcome to our contest master of tonight, DTM, Cassandra Lee. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We are in for a treat. We are coming to the last round of contest, right before we get to the big night. And that would be at the spring conference for the Table Topics and International Speech Contest. As Bill Muriel, our contest chair, has already explained to you, this is for Central North, and we have a full agenda for tonight. Since we have a full agenda, what I want to do is make certain that I recognize at least the dignitaries, and then I introduce you to the contestants. Sounds like a plan? Yes. yes. All right. Now, we know in the Toastmaster culture, we always like to give recognition to those that are dignitaries in the room. So as I look at my trusty cheat sheet here, I would like to have Public Relations Officer Don Williams stand. I was quickly scanning the room and I was thinking, I know Don is here, his signature is on the list. <laughs> Thanks, Don, for standing there. Now I know I've seen this lovely young lady because when I entered the room this evening, I saw our North Division Governor, Ethel Goatee. <laughs> Taking on the job of one of the area governors and he is listed as our Area One Governor, Dean Glasson. <laughs> Dean and I had the fortunate privilege of checking in this evening at the same time. That's so good. Oh, wow, we have more area governors on our list here. B15, area governor, Fabian Fan. <laughs> we also have present for tonight our B17 area governor, Denise Johnson. Working tonight to assist us as Sergeant at Arms, we have our C21 Area Governor, Rachel Taft. <laughs> Someone near and dear to my heart, our C22 Area Governor, Linda Muriel. <laughs> our C25 Area Governor, Mandy Shaw. to make certain I call people what their mama named them. <laughs> Your last name, is it pronounced Shaw or Shay? Shaw, you got Shaw. it. Shaw, perfect. Thank you, Mandy. Making certain that we also give recognition to our area, C26 area governor, Ms. Doretha Banks. <laughs> our area C27 governor, Ms. Sonica Eason. Our N41 Area Governor, Grace Wu. Grace must be taking care of some business for us, or did I miss Grace? She had to leave separately. Oh, okay. There you go. And as I'm flipping through, flipping through, flipping through, I don't see any more signatures. However, let me ask this. Are there any dignitaries present that I did not get a chance to recognize because I grabbed the list too soon? 
Are there any dignitaries? Please let us know which area, which division. Central South, Area B11, Darnell Hall. Anyone else that I may have missed? And of course, we know Bill Morrill, correct? Central North Division. <laughs> all right, with that being said, I do believe I have recognized all of our dignitaries. And again, I am ready to recognize for you our contestants. The contestants have been briefed. The functionaries have been briefed. Everyone knows what to do for this evening. Yet you don't know yet the speaking order. So why don't you go ahead and take out your program so that way I can let you know for our table topic contest, since that is the very first contest we're going to start with, let me provide you with the speaking order for tonight's table topics contest. Contestant number one will be John Cams. Contestant number one, John Cams. Contestant number two, Patrick Johansson. Contestant number two will be Patrick Johansson. Contestant number three will be Jesse Graham. Contestant number three will be Jesse Graham. Contestant number four will be Ava Tony Snyder. Contestant number four will be Ava Tony Snyder. Contestant number five will be Vincent Del Toro. Contestant number five will be Vincent Del Toro. And contestant number six will be Patrick Stevenson. Contestant number six will be Patrick Stevenson. Our contestant speaking order has been identified. Let me ask at this time if our Sergeant at Arms will escort all of our contestants out of the room except for our very first contestant. <coughs> so table topic contestants, if you could please approach the back of the room so that way you can meet up with the Sergeant at Arms and also we can start getting, into, getting you guys mic'd as well. And contestant number one, John Cams, you'll stay in the room. And Mr. Madam, Mr. Speaker, at a kind of session, John, from the back, we'll start sure. our contestants from the back of the room. Okay. <clears throat> and as we are having our contestants exit the room, I just got a signal and felt it in my pocket as well. Do you guys have these items here, gadgets? Let's make certain that we turn off our cell phones, our pagers, our beepers, anything that will ring, sing, tick, click, clap, you know, make a noise. We don't want to disturb our contestants. As you are doing that, I am doing the same to make certain that my silencer is on, so that way the contestants can have full reign of the stage for tonight. All right. We are now ready to begin. As a matter of fact, we do a tradition here when we know everything is all set up and we're all ready. Before we introduce that first contestant, we usually say, let the contest begin. Yeah. Contestant number one, John Cams. They say April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean for you? They say April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean for you? John Cams. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. I, uh, very great question with this weather today. It's like summer out there today, and if you live in Chicago. So, what does April showers bring May flowers mean to me? Well, to me, it means that it's the beginning, but it's also you're going to have to kind of muscle through Chicago weather for a little bit longer. So, one thing that I've noticed 
uh, is that in Chicago, spring just never comes. It's, I, I told one of my friends today earlier, I said, you know, I hope to God it's not like the last two winters, I think two winters ago, it was May 31st, and I was sitting outside freezing. So <laughs> April showers, bringing May flowers, is really about rebirth, spring, the, sh the, the rain comes down, and flowers come out. And in Chicago, you basically are hoping and praying that these showers will end, but it's also a way for you to basically think, well, the weather's horrible, but guess what? In May, there's gonna be flowers. So thank you very much. And that's what I got. <laughs> judges can mark their ballot. Thank you, timers. Contestant number two, Patrick Johansson. They say April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean for you? They say that April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean for you, Patrick Johansson? Five years ago tonight in a Memphis motel at 6.01 p.m. shots rang out. He's been hit! He's shot! He's bleeding! Martin is dead on April 4th, 1968. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. What a shocking moment in our history. And if ever there were showers in April, one of the events in our history, I think, was that event. And yet, even though cities burned, ghetto riots, violence spread throughout the country, in 2008, this country elected the first African-American president. I think that means May flowers. I think that means hope. On a personal level, April and hope go together for me because my daughter, Hope, is born on May 11th. <laughs> but think what changed as a result of that assassination. In fact, only two months later, in June of 1968, U.S. Senator Robert Kennedy Jr. was assassinated. What a year, 1968. Right here in Chicago, the Democratic National Convention had all kinds of riots and violence. Everything from, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids have you killed today? To, we shall overcome. Right? What a great anthem. So many tears were shed. So many showers 45 years ago tonight because of that. And yet we can still stand and be proud and know that in this country, 
there's equality, at least legally, and we have Barack Obama to look to as our Mayflower. Thank you, Mr. Tyers. Contestant number three, Jesse Graham. They say <coughs> April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean for you? They say April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean for you, Jesse Graham? showers bring May flowers. What that means is basically, literally, the showers of April bring the growth of the flowers in May. So, April shower bring May flower. That means a renewing, a birth of spring, summertime, good fun, uh, warm weather, something we can all look on to. But that's interesting because I was in the elevator last week and there were some rather young people on it with me. And I said to them, well, April shower bring May flowers. But you know what? March came in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. They had never heard that expression before. So when you pose the question, April shower bring May flowers, it started me thinking about what other expressions kids today do not experience that we just take for granted. So that took me back to thinking, April shower bring May flowers. Now we got to look into it after May, what's the next thing to say? Uh, June's new moon brings new blooms? I don't know. <laughs> there isn't always good things out there to say. There's not cliches, but one of the things that I know for sure is that the things your parents tell you, you pass down the line to your children. And one of the things my kids do know is that April showers bring May flowers, and March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. And that's my story. Thank you. Timers, can we have a minute of silence so the judges can mark their path? Thank you, Mr. Timers. Contestant number four, Ava Tony Snyder. 
They say April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean to you? They say that April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean to you? Ava Tony Snyder. Toastmasters and distinguished guests. April showers bring May flowers. Well, it's kind of an anomaly in, this, in the state of Illinois because in April, we just may not get those April showers. We might be knee deep in winter snow. So, barring the winter snow, I think April showers brings May flowers. Sort of a sweet idea that it puts in your mind. You think about the May flowers. If the cats in the neighborhood haven't eaten them up. <laughs> All the beautiful colors, the wonderful fragrant smells. I think that that statement kind of puts you in a state of melancholy a little bit. Because even though spring is about to arrive, or has already arrived, and you're looking forward to the much warmer weather, you kind of start to miss all of the drama of winter. <laughs> the heavy boots, the heavy coat, the gloves. Hmm. Come to think of it, Maybe not. <laughs> but I think it's a wonderful phrase. It's been around for years. And certainly, I am looking forward to those April showers, whenever we get them, to bring some May, some June, and some July flowers. Madam Contest Madam. so that the judges can mark their ballots. Thank you, Mr. Tyler's. Contestant number five, Vincent Del Toro. They say April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean for you? They say that April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean to you? Vincent Del Toro. Toastmasters, distinguished guests, I was the scrawniest kid in high school. And I mean that by a long shot. This arm, the entire thing, was the length of my wrist. I was the skinniest kid. I had the legs of a little 12-year-old girl. It wasn't the best going through puberty, growing up, and realizing that I'm not going to make the football team, I'm not going to make the basketball team, I'm not even going to make the chess team. <laughs> So I realized, senior year of high school, when I got to college, I wanted to make a change. So I decided to do something. I went online, I searched bodybuilding, I searched powerlifting, I searched Olympic lifting, CrossFit. I was so excited. 
I went online and I brought the protein powder, I bought the supplements, I was working out, I was sweating a lot. You think April showers? You think that's a lot? You should have seen the sweat. <laughs> the sweat just drenching down my little body. When I got to college, I was still a pretty scrawny kid. And I was frustrated. I thought I was supposed to get huge by college. I, was, I thought I was going to be one of those big frat boys with his chest puffed out, drinking a beer. But no, I was still scrawny. But you know what? I realized that it takes time. You can't do this in one year. I've been in Toastmasters for one year, and I still think I have an entire lifetime to get better. And that's the same way I thought about bodybuilding, about improving my body. It's been four years since then. I definitely wouldn't say I'm a Sylvester Stallone, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, or anything close to that. But I think I've got some decent muscle. I can bench 225 pounds. It feels great. And you know what? I think I can make a chess team this year. <laughs> Thank you. silence on the clock so that the judges can mark their values. Thank you, Mr. Timers. Contestant number six, Patrick Stevenson. They say April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean to you? They say that April showers bring May flowers. What does that statement mean to you? Patrick Stevenson. As a gardener, I gotta say, I hope it means that we're gonna get some good rain and I'm gonna have a heck of a garden this summer. But what I really think it means, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and our guests tonight, from hardship can come triumph. It's one of the long line of sayings, every cloud is a silver lining. It's always darkest before the dawn. April showers bring May flowers, but you have to know where to look for them. How many of you have ever been suffering? You've wondered, when is this going to be over? You're in a tough job, you're having a tough time in school, you're having a tough time at home, and then suddenly things start to clear up. And often, often it's simply because of your attitude. Often that's the only thing that changes. When you see showers, when my kids see a storm coming, they get scared, they don't like it, they're complaining and whining. I'm thinking, are you guys kidding me? A thunderstorm on the plains? Thunder, lightning, rain? These are exciting times. These are the things to look forward to. As they grow up, they will learn that. When I was a kid, I was terrified of tornadoes. Now tornadoes are a huge sport. They're TV series, they're movies. <laughs> And they were my worst nightmare when I was a kid. <laughs> so April showers may bring May flowers, whether it's hardship, whether it's misunderstanding. It is your attitude. How do you look at life? The happiest people in the world are people that have nowhere near the technology and the lifestyle that we have. It's been said that tribes in Africa and South America are the most contented people. 
And it's because of their attitude. They love what they have, and they have what they love. So if April showers bring May flowers, that's absolutely right. And remember, when you face hardship, you have to have that attitude. Madam Toastmaster. Judges mark their ballots. Thank you everyone for remaining silent as our judges Madam Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Great, thank you. <laughs> Table top and contestants, you can now breathe. <laughs> <laughs> we are at this time going to hear from one of our area governors who's going to come forward and give us some details about what's happening in the district. And after that, we will take a 10-minute intermission before we start our international speech contest. So why don't you help me welcome to the podium tonight, Dean Glasson, who will share with us the District 30 <laughs> Please see Ethel Goatee to RSVP a spot for you in the chair at the North Division contest. And another question for you. Where is the place to be on Friday night, April 26th? 
Skokie. 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 For what? Spring, Spring Conference. Yeah. What's the theme of that conference? The power to inspire. The power to inspire. Friday night, the table topics contest. One of our, one of, someone is going to be representing Central North at that contest on Friday night, April 26th. Great opportunity for us all to be there. The next morning, bright and early, 7 o'clock in the morning, where's the place to be? Okay. The Cheever's Breakfast! breakfast. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> Anyone has received an educational award from when to when? The fall conference <laughs> and the spring conference! <laughs> and to be general about it, the fall conference, if you received an educational award from the fall conference or the spring conference, please make sure your Vice President of Education has submitted that award so you can be there. And promptly, immediately after the Achievers Breakfast, the Banner Parade! <laughs> the Banner Parade! And the theme of that Banner Parade is, I'll tell you <laughs> how we inspire each other. Use your 15 minutes, 15, not 15 minutes, but 15 seconds. You have 15 seconds to inspire us. Share your story of your club. Hold that banner high and tell us, show us how you inspire us. In 15 seconds, or you'll be disqualified. <laughs> right afterwards, Patricia Fripp is going to be sharing some important information with us for one hour. Patricia Fripp, world famous coach. And immediately afterwards, the most exciting thing in the world a business meeting of District 30, where your Vice President of Education and your club president will be voting for the elected positions in District 30. Very important that being sure your club is represented. And immediately following that, a great lunch with Patricia Fripp again. So make sure you get your, your seat at the luncheon. Go on the District 30 website and, and make sure that you have a seat at that luncheon. Followed by an afternoon of red carpet ceremonies for your club. You can carry your banner high again and red, walk the red carpet with your club. <coughs> Again, followed by the International Speech Contest. Woo. So, are we inspired? Yeah. yeah, we'll be there. But I want you to save one date. One date, please remember to save this date. Not necessarily for yourselves, but for your club officers. Go back to your club and make sure, please, that June 15th is saved for your club officers to be trained at the Toastmasters Leadership Institute on June 15th. Great opportunity. So please make sure you go back and talk to your club officers and, or your potential club officers and make sure they save that date. As dean of your, that TLI, it's my responsibility to make sure we all get there. So fellow Toastmasters, I'm inspired by even being downtown with <laughs> Division Central North Division today. Madam Contest <laughs> chair and he is giving me the signal that we are on point for a 10 minute intermission 10 minute intermission international speech contestants remember whoever's the first person see bill Muriel right before we get in that break so we can get you mic'd up all right see you guys in 10.